On the issue of climate change, the financial sector says it's committing up to $100 trillion to help the world get to net zero. The Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero includes more than 450 banks, insurers and asset managers. We've got JP Morgan, HSBC, Mitsubishi, UFJ. They're all there. Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, is leading this effort. And climate activists are skeptical, skeptical saying the group members are still invested in fossil fuel companies. Incidentally, Mark Carney will be on this program tomorrow. Bain & Co., the management consultants firm, went net zero in 2012. Manny Mercida is its worldwide managing partner and joins me now. Manny, um, OK, so you went net zero and that's good for a company, a large company like your own. Um, but the... The reality is the big stuff is with your clients, isn't it? And to that extent, it's with those clients who still either invest in or deal with or have as part of their business traditional fossil fuel as part of their business. What can you do about that? Yeah, I'd uh, clarify, Richard, that we were carbon neutral a while back. We committed, uh, like many companies have, to be net zero, in our case, by 2030 and we're part of a large group of alliance of climate leaders who have committed to be net zero 2050. And as you said, for, uh, for any of the large companies in the world, including our clients, you have to focus on, uh, on your own footprint and uh, do the range of investments and technologies to, to achieve mm -hmm. goals specific to your structure. You know, we, we as a firm, uh, our, uh, our biggest footprint as an example is aviation, it's air travel. For other companies, it might be steel right. or shipping or production. And then, so, yes, it's quite different company to company. So what do you, just stay on your own company then, what do you believe post-pandemic will be the reduction for your internal travel budget, including visiting clients? In order for us to uh, get to net zero carbon as a firm, we will need to reduce our, uh, our footprint uh, from air travel by about a third. Um, and that's our commitment. Um, so the question is how much do you do that via volume, um, doing meetings like this, Richard, versus in person, and how much you do this by actually having um, aviation itself become sustainable. Um, you know, tomorrow at uh, COP26, I'm actually flying to uh, Glasgow tonight myself. Um, a group of companies are in, announcing a first movers coalition will be part of the group in aviation as a major user, together with airlines, major producers, to, to pre-commit mm -hmm. um, ways to, to get right. sustainable aviation fuel lower priced to help us achieve our goals. And so it, 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 will make a, it will make a difference in volume for sure, but, uh, but also it has to be more sustainable flying. On the wider issue of what you of the way forward. The economic argument or the economic solution is probably the way. Which way do you think works best? And I know it's going to be all of them to some extent. But for instance, are we talking about carbon taxation, emission trading schemes, a higher price of carbon, which is what, 60 uh, euros per ton at the moment? Some suggest that has to double or triple before it becomes meaningful with an ETS to actually bring down carbon levels? I do think we have to have a real carbon pricing, carbon accounting. And, uh, and as companies make commitment to do this and build this into our, our strategies and budgets, in the end, Richard, I think this will end up being just good, thoughtful business decisions. Obviously, we need help from regulation. But as you said, the bankers want to do this, the investors. Our customers want to do this. It's mean higher cost. Maybe over time, you have to lower it. Clearly, the employees all want to work for more sustainable companies. In the end, I think we will. Um, we are all pretty committed to uh, to do the right things here, and I do think this will end up being solvable in the end. But it'll take time. You see, I just wonder. It'll take time, and I understand that. But what I'm not hearing from anybody is pain. And if we are going to meet the 1.5 degree target, and Greta points out we're all and as the, as the ipcc points out we're already well off track for that i don't hear anybody saying do you know something it's going to cost profits it's going to cost investment it's going to cost maybe cost jobs instead i'm hearing everybody saying in the fullness of time well i think uh the clock is ticking as you said and i don't expect that uh, we can just wait 
And so the commitments we're making now, the investments we make today, the behavioral change we make today for, for, for you and me on everything we can do, you know, including you know, a trip like this, I might have thought a few years ago, fly there, fly back. You leverage it over time. You're going to pay higher cost. But that's just what needs to be done, right, well, And so I, I'm going to remain optimistic we can get through this. Well, since you mentioned the flight, I mean, how are you getting to, to Scotland? You know, I'm I'm flying, and just just like uh, you know, you I've seen you in airports around the world, uh, my friend. So it's it's sort of a mindset now, right? Where compared to a few years ago, if I'm going to make this trip, I wouldn't have made this trip if I wasn't going to leverage it with other visits to Europe that I can bundle over now a week and a half, uh, so that it's uh, because business will need to continue. We will need to have some physical human-to-human -human interactions. Right. But that's just a, a kind of behavioral change that has to be happening at a more, an even more massive scale. For us, it's air travel. For other companies, it's how you ship, how you buy, how you produce. And, um, and yes, I think uh, this is being taken seriously now by everybody. It's not lip service. It's full right. commitment of strategy from the top. And, um, and so I, uh, I remain hopeful that we can, uh, it's not too late. Good to see you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, Thank you for having me.